So we are, as Sarah already mentioned, we are here with Sarah and with Sam, and our guest speaker today is Judith Carr from Oliva Free University. And as usual, um, we'll start with Judith giving us a short talk about how they go about using DMT online at their university. We'll walk through a few updates for you. We'll open the space for your questions and discussions or points you wish to raise with us. And um, toward the end, um, we'll just announce when our next reference meeting is. But if you're having any things you want to raise as we go, please either unmute yourself or if you can't speak where you are, just pop a message into the chat and um, we, can, we can just answer as we go. So if you're Judith ready now, I'll just give you the space now. So okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Magdalena. Um, so yes, I'm really just uh, giving a short sort of uh, praise of what we've been doing at uh, the University of Liverpool. Uh, there's a team, that's myself and Gary. Uh, with regard to uh, getting more engagement using DMP online. So since September, we've tried uh, several initiatives apart from uh, the ubiquitous workshop. In the first term, we had what we called DMP online weeks, where we were available to talk over lunchtime to anybody uh, who wanted to know about DMP online or data management plans. And we also asked um, colleagues from ethics uh, and the Data Protection Office has come along as well to, to share our lunch with us, to share lunch with us. Um, we thought it was fairly successful in that we had somebody every day, which was a bonus because we didn't think we'd get people at all. However, there wasn't enough people really to ask for ethics um, to come back and do it another time or, or the Data Protection Officer. It wasn't really worthwhile having you know, three people sitting there over lunch. So we decided not to repeat our lunchtime events. This term, however, we've decided to have what we call surgeries, and we have those every two weeks from, <coughs> excuse me, from late morning uh, to lunchtime, so we catch early and late lunches. Uh, and we chose a Thursday to do this because ethics do something uh, like a drop-in thing on a Friday, and we thought, oh, if we get any ethics questions, we can signpost them over to Friday. And we call them surgeries because, A, you want to call them something different than a drop-in, but also because we felt like surgeries are more like hands-on, like we're helping you. We're not going to do it for you. We're going to tell you how to do it. We're helping you with what you've got. Mm -hmm. And the good news is that we've had more researchers than PhD students, yay, which is really good. So we've had more real-life examples and real questions about what to do with data management plans. The bad news is the numbers are not good yet. Although one day we had actually three people, which was which was three hundred percent more than the day before, the week before. <laughs> um, it's good statistics there. <laughs> However, um, it is enough to persuade us to carry it on till the end of April. Uh, we're going to avoid the major exam period here at Liverpool due to space issues. We always, everybody always has space issues. And after Easter, we're planning to run workshops in a block during May, June, and July. Now, we started doing uh, workshops in the summer last year because, quite frankly, we got appallingly bad numbers in the autumn. We were like two, three, four, five, and it, and it just didn't seem worth it. And we do get more numbers in the summer. So we demonstrate DMP online in these workshops, but this year we're, we're hoping to bring in a wider range of researchers by including issues, tagging issues, tagging workshops with uh, such things as reproducibility, uh, GDPR anonymization. These tags, we think, will help get researchers over the thresholds. And we do have specific parts of those workshops um, geared up to those areas. We'll also be using Lego. Um, and we have done before, but after seeing what Glasgow did uh, last week, we'll be redefining our exercise. Um, during Open Research Week, which we organise with um, Liverpool John Moore's Library, which was the week before last, um, we got to know our local UK uh, UK reproducibility network representative, and I think he's a really good contact. I'm hoping he'll he'll help us more with some of these workshops as well when we tag them for reproducibility. But who knows? I have to ask. So one activity and connection that's been very produ uh, productive in terms of um, pushing forward uh, data management plans is my involvement in our local uh, information governance pr governance practitioners group. Uh, this started because uh, about a year and a half ago, the Data Protection Officer and the Information Governance Officer and I used to meet up for a cup of tea and discuss what was happening. Uh, that particular Data Protection Officer left, but we got a new Data Protection Officer, and so the group was actually born. And the group actually includes myself, as I said, the Data Protection Officer and the Information Governance Officer, 
the records manager, the ethics team, and also some uh, colleagues from a data improvement project. Now, showing them the DMP online tool has proved a really good way of getting their support and uh, they promote it as well. They're really keen to promote the idea there's something uh, that people can do. The group itself has been a really good way to understand where our roles overlap or don't. In other words, go away. It's not me, it's somebody else. But knowing that person is really good. And it gets across a message about research data and we all signpost to each other. Also really good that big projects think they just need to talk to one person like they may go to ethics and talk about it but then they say oh there's a big project coming along they need to think about things so we do get to know about uh, what's happening so i now do a double act with our information governance officer to departments and research coordinators um, this is a really good message actually because it means that you you're saying yeah you need to be that you need to be secure with how you manage your data but that doesn't rule out sharing because i think quite a few people think one uh, negates the other but it doesn't mm -hmm. so those are what we're doing at the moment uh, in terms of uh, people make, uh, using the tool uh, we think the feedback request uh, making that more obvious is, is, is really useful but we don't get as many as, as we thought we would at the moment mm -hmm. one thing that's not going too well at the moment and that's probably because it's slow progress is we're not quantifying what we're doing I mean we're just about to manage colour coding our emails when, it talk, when we start talking about data management plans so we're taking very small steps, um, uh, but it's slow progress, which means at the present we, we, there's no reason to support uh, a push for more, for more people involved in, in our roles. Um, the benefit at the moment lies in asking the right questions and finding out about projects. Um, and for this, we feel that it's really good to have either a phone call or face-to-face -face meetings for the best results, because it takes to... Um, and this helps us because it takes we learn about what, what researchers are doing from these questions. But you really do have to ask questions because um, it, it takes time for them to talk about what they're doing. Sometimes, it, you know, there's not a there's not a real um, push to tell you exactly what you've been doing all, all along. Mm -hmm. There's been an increase in colleagues using the data management plan, DMP online, which is great. Um, well, they've been creating accounts and things like that. Yeah. Um, we don't know what the overall effect has been because we've tried last year and emailed out people who'd used DMP online and our response was pretty ridiculous, really. We got one person who was absolutely, completely overwhelmed by the fact it was a really good, good tool, but one person <laughs> after 40 doesn't really make a good statistic. Yeah. <laughs> So finally, our gut feeling is that we will see the benefits of our push to use the tool and shouting out about it wherever we can further on down the line, but it's going to take time. It's frustrating um, that it's taking time for researchers to use the tool. Um, and as I said, we don't get very much feedback, but we like it and uh, our colleagues like it, so we're pushing it. Um, what is annoying at the moment is that sometimes they come to, a, a, come to us and ask us for a universal answer for, you know, mm -hmm. can I just put a sentence down here, please, because that's all I need. And we have to sort of say, well, you know, you wouldn't expect somebody to do that just for your project. You're describing what your project is, and therefore we need more information. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what's happening at Liverpool. Yeah, fantastic. Well, really, Judith, thank you for sharing. This is really insightful, and we we're writing some notes as well. Um, yeah. For us. yeah, and tweeting some things so that more people <laughs> can pick up on, on what you've been doing. I think there's, I mean, that was jam packed with really good examples. I love the idea of, um, like the drop-in and surgery, surgery sessions yeah. because I think uh, you might not get you know massive footfall at those but actually being able to talk to somebody and there's people to know that they can come and book time mm -hmm. with you I think is really useful yeah. um, and then like yeah. you said all the links between the different areas of the university because RDM cross crosses all those different service units mm -hmm. so you know, trying to yeah, that, that has been very useful, I think, and that, that gives us more kudos. It gives the tool more kudos that somebody else says, oh, use this. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not just a, yeah. Yeah. So um, in terms of people on the call, Christopher, Petra, um, Bev, do you have any questions or um, observations around the Liverpool examples, things that you'd maybe like to echo or, or things that you'd like to ask more about? You don't all have to be shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, if not, You're that's quite. Fine. Don't don't worry, don't worry. No if not. pressure. Um, um, is yeah, anybody but, else going to use Lego? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, so people who who might not be aware of this, 
Um, there was uh, we had the IDCC conference last week. Um, mm -hmm. Mary Donaldson um, did a lightning talk on how they use Lego essentially for like a metadata size to demonstrate what metadata you need to be able to replicate um, results. Because if you're missing certain elements, you can't do the research in the same way or you can't build the same Lego object. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so yeah, I think that's a really interesting example and people love to play with Lego. <laughs> so by all means, reuse it. And it's great to hear that you're planning to do that as well at Liverpool, Judith. Yeah, we do. We do a mini one as well, actually. I do a mini one with um, Lego ducks. Oh, okay. So rather, than, so this is something I learned from uh, one of our academic developers who uses is a Lego certified Lego person. You get a certificate. Oh, you go down to Lego wherever it is. Um, is it Lego Serious Play? It's called. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, and we the so as an intro because a lot everybody has has played with Lego. Not everybody understands what Lego is, or if they have, it's in their dim and distant past. And they're feeling a bit shy. So you have this, and you, this is a standalone exercise where you have a team duck that you've built out of the same eight pieces. I think it's eight. We have eight pieces of Lego. And we just give them those eight pieces of Lego and say, now make a duck. And we oh. never get the same duck. Never, ever. I mean, we've had 11 different ducks made out of these different pieces of Lego. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a nice, easy way to do it as well, because everyone has a, it, an idea. It gets people in, interested in the idea of what Lego is, especially if you haven't told them that you're going to be playing with Lego. It's like, oh, really? Yeah. I think we might need to invest in some for DCC training courses so we can all become Lego masters. <laughs> yeah, it's serious play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Extra things to put on our CVs. Um, so I think there were some comments mm -hmm. just from um, Bevo in the chat. Just, mm -hmm. I don't know. So Petra is saying uh, you're more likely to implement DMT online, which we are happy to hear. So all experiences are welcome. And what I always do, Petra, I don't know how much you're aware, but after these, like I post, uh, I put um, the video online. But what I'll be doing as well, I'll be just writing a summary and uh, putting it into into our newsletter. So I'll try to add the links for the Lego as well from yeah. IBCC. Uh, yeah. Because for those who don't know, we were running IBCC last week. And um, on the, I think it was on the last day on the UN conference, we were running those Lego workshops, yeah. which yeah. might be quite nice for people to know about. So I'll try to add them yeah. into our DMP on my newsletter. And um, then Judith has said something. You've not had that problem yet that people turn up at the beginning, is that? Um, I think Bevan said everyone turns up to their drop-ins all at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that can... I had actually wondered, I don't know whether either of you do this, do you um, put essentially like a schedule so that people can sign up yeah. for like a 15-minute slot? No, good grief, 28. Straight. I know, wow. this is what you're doing, Bevan. You need to be like offering free Lego or something. No, no, we haven't. And I thought that... Um, if we did get off that problem, there's two of us who sit in the in the in the for the for the for the surgeries, and if we do have that, actually, it gives quite a good impression that other people are doing the same thing. So we yeah. just like take their name and just say we'll come and see you later, you know, and yeah. make an appointment, because there's nothing like other, knowing other people. Your time is precious, and knowing other people want it for them to feel yeah. that it's a good service. Yeah, that's a bit of psychology there. <laughs> Maybe just trying. I don't know. There's like a suggestion. Just trying to do the polls for the future, um, so you can yeah. see barely, um how many people are interested and trying yeah. to yeah. spread the lens. I don't know. Or, or one thing we did actually. At, um, uh, I think it was Northampton with Miggy Picton when she was the RDM librarian there. We actually did a workshop, and for the final two hours, I think it was, of the workshop, we had drop-in sessions slotted in. So during the workshop, we could coordinate with people and actually schedule them. Um, so people, you know, if they were interested in, like, a one-on-one, -on -one, um, we could actually, like, agree it and get a time. And then that helped to manage, you know, who was coming when. And it gave us a yeah. little bit of time to try and figure out, like, which discipline are they from, what might they ask. Because um, it can sometimes be a little bit daunting if you, you know, essentially it's a blank canvas and you don't know what questions you're going to get. Yeah, that's true. I, th I think I think the uh, our issue is that we just don't, we wouldn't get that many people saying they wanted to come. So yeah. I think that's why it's got to be sort of informal. So um, I think we need to get the message out that we're here and that mm -hmm, it's yeah. a service. So I think if there's more people than us 
can't we just say, you know, come back or we'll do something again? Because then they'll go, oh, yeah, people, other people use it. I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. Exactly. Different institutions are different, aren't they? You know, some institutions, yeah. people just sign up and it's great. We don't have, we yeah. have that a problem in Liverpool. Yeah, you have yeah. to drive it. And I think um, also, I, I don't know like whether you um, co-locate with some like of the key researcher events, but I know at Glasgow Uni we have like a like a fair every year where it's for new staff and for new researchers. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we have done that as well. Yeah, yeah. they usually yeah, have a guest we staff, we do that. I mean, so. I think I think the best best sort of thing is we've got a research and staff association and we just get involved in that as well. Yeah. Um, try try and push push things through with them as well so anything that they have we try and get involved with um but yeah as apologies i said it's slow progress here yeah apologies for the engineering sounds in the background um yeah i know yeah. There's, there's, edinburgh there's always something going on um but maybe we could just run through a couple of yeah. updates um, um we'll just run because we will be running out of time so we have 10 more minutes but please as we go um and there is something you wish to add or ask just do so it's lovely to have this discussion actually um but just a few very quick updates um we are planning a user group in london um so I don't know, Sarah, how much you were speaking to. to so, mm -hmm. so we're going to be holding an RDMF um, as well as the DMP online user group and training course. And we're trying to figure out what to hold on each, which day. Mm -hmm. So my preference, because I need to go to Brussels on 23rd of April, is to hold the DMP stuff on the 22nd. But technically that had been put in for the RDMF. So we're just waiting to see if we can swap them over. Um, but if you want to hold those dates, if you're interested, the RDMF will be around arts data and managing, um, you know, creative arts. And um, we're, we're working with University of Arts in London, so we'll be doing an RDMF with them. And then, oh yeah, um, that, that's going to be very popular. Yeah, no, exactly. So either 22nd or 23rd for that, and then the DMP stuff will be on the alternate day. Mm -hmm. um, at IDCC, which we've mentioned, we had a number of talks on DMPs. So Sam gave a demo of our work. You can get the slides online. I think the links are in the chat. Oh, the um, and Magdalena did one around our business models. And then there was actually a couple of times a session on demos and papers around DMPs. So there's a number of things that are useful links. Um, very excitingly, um, conditional questions are very close. Um, to, to go up. Yeah, we've been doing the UAT on that yesterday. Um, so Ray, um, another developer who's actually off this week because of the strikes, um, he's done um, the updates on that. So we're getting that ready to push out. And I, I won't be running because, again, we're just running out of time. But um, we were having our February newsletter already out, and there are quite um, nice uh, links to blog posts and uh, things which we wanted to share with you, such as we, we were running a user group in Utrecht in January. Mm -hmm. So if you wish to know what we were discussing and see which new tickets which we uh, which we raised afterwards, I would just suggest there. And quite nicely, Sarah was also putting together like a DMP online year in review uh, blog post for you. So you can see how much the team has grown and the work which we have planned. And mm -hmm. um, there has been quite nice growth over the past year. So I do recommend having a look at the newsletter and subscribing if you're not subscribed. Um, and just to let you know, our January recording DMP online drop in session is live on YouTube. And for those who don't know, um, there is a list of all of these. Um, I'm trying to always just link them. So if you want to listen to any others, um, they're quite easily to be found. Yeah. So so each month we have um, a little discussion from somebody about how they're using the tool at their institution. So um, so it might be worth even just listening into those because you get nice examples of different ways of kind of rolling it out and supporting academics. So. Um, also, um, thank you very much for all that have already volunteered to be our guest speaker. It's, I think, um, being very useful um, for everyone being involved in these drop-in sessions, but also for people probably coming to them later afterwards when they can join us on the day. <clears throat> I'm currently, sorry, my voice is going. I'm currently uh, having a new doodle poll uh, for the guest speakers, uh, which I'm sharing here as well in the chat. So. Um, if you can volunteer to be the guest speaker for the months to come um, and you could just indicate your availability, um, it'll be much, much appreciated. And 
Yeah, and the last one. So next month we've got um, Michelle Harrington mm -hmm. um, from St George's University. She actually gave a really interesting talk at the IDCC conference as well about work they've done um, across different service units um, to try and essentially have like a, a data commons that um, you're giving the data creators the control over um, the protection of their materials and defining the access rights. Um, so that that was a really interesting talk that I'd point you to. We can certainly add the link to that. Um, and we'll hear about how they're using um, DMP online as well. So she's, um, yeah, St. George's. Um, and again, we, we have five more minutes. Uh, so I don't know whether there are any more questions or points um, from anyone in this phone call. But if not, um, as always, please drop us an email if there is any issue or anything exciting you want to share with us or any questions to dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. If you're not following us on Twitter, um, I do recommend you to do so. We, we share quite a lot of updates um, through Twitter. We are on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. And as I mentioned previously, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, I would highly recommend subscribing to our newsletter because we share um, loads of releases, updates, uh, videos, and um, dates such as for drop-in sessions and trainings um, through there as well. So um, I think it's a good place to have an overall look at what's happening with DMP online. And if no one has anything more to add, uh, thank you very much for coming today and joining us in our Cool. Thank you, Judith, very much for sharing. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I don't. I, think, I, should, I should be on top of knowing this. I don't know if you've written up a blog yet, but if you're willing to, I think the examples of how you've done the different events and connected people up would be a really good one to, to post online too. Um, possibly, yeah, yeah, my do. <laughs> I've got a no, couple of other things to do, vlogs no, to do at the moment, no, but yeah. No, no, no rush to do it. Um, okay, that's great. I, I yeah. I think it was a very kind of rich example. So, so maybe sometime this year when you actually have time yeah. free from all the yeah, no, that's good. Stuff. I might do something okay. about um, the stuff that I do with my the information of my colleague uh, Krista because that's good. That's useful. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I keep missing Judith, so apologies, Judith, for that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so apologies. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. But thank you again, everyone, for joining our call today, and uh, we'll hopefully speak to you all on the 13th of March. Half past ten. Excellent. Thank all you. right. Thanks, bye, everybody. Bye. bye, -bye.